Okay, I'm back. <laughs> this is my friend, the tentacle. Uh, it's a quite a nice, friendly tentacle. I feel like you hopefully could make something where the tentacle's a bit more colorful. Maybe it has some cute eyes and it smiles and it reaches for an apple and then hands it to somebody else because somebody else could use an apple and then they're gonna be happy. You should go and do all that stuff. What I'm gonna do in this video is I wanna take all this gobbledygook uh, all this code that is in the main program here, and I want to put it in an object. And I kind of did this before. I want to put it in an object in order to... Um, why do I want to do this? Ah, because I want to make more than one of these tentacle things. So right now I have this organizational structure where there's a segment, and a segment is one piece of a tentacle. The tentacle is an array of segments. So I actually want to make a tentacle object which has that array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new tab. I'm going to call it tentacle. And this is going to be the easy part. I'm going to say class tentacle. Boy, I'm having like a crazy deja vu here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, ah, what is a tentacle? It needs these three things. It needs an array, it needs a base, and it needs a length for the segments. And obviously you can vary that to your heart's content. I'm going to take all of this stuff and put this in the constructor for this object, for this class. Whoops. So now when I make it, I create all this stuff. And ah, this is gonna be really good because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, when I make the constructor, I'm going to be able to set its base. I don't know why I'm putting this first, but so the idea is the tentacles are all the same. Now I could give it more, this you should do, right? I should give the, I'm gonna make a tentacle and say, how many segments, the length of the segments, your color, I could, I could vary it in a lot of ways, but I'm gonna keep things simple here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at all this code and I'm pretty sure basically everything is kind of can go in an update function. So I'm just putting everything, I could separate out some of this logic, but I'm doing the thing where I have it follow the mouse, and then I have it, um, what do I have it do after that? I, uh, then I update all its locations, then I like set it backwards to its base, I do all that, and then I'm gonna write a function, and I'm gonna call it show, and it just iterates through the array, and show, and this is a place where I could use an enhanced loop, people like it when I discuss different kinds of loops. So I'm going to say tentacle T in tentacle. And I kind of want to call this segments because I think it's a little confusing to call that tentacle. So I'm going to change that also. I'm going to try something kind of crazy. Uh, and I'm going to say t.show. Okay. Let's just see if this works. Well, <laughs> whoops. Uh, what did I do here? I think I messed something up. Oh, this is a segment. See, this is why it's so confusing. I've got to be really clear about this, right? Every segment S, this is why I want to change. So I'm going to run this. And now I'm going to refactor this in a second. I'm going to show you something kind of cool that I think you can do in processing now. So I'm going to now make a tentacle. Tentacle T. I really should have thought of something besides tentacle. <laughs> tentacle. I'm going to give it a base with divided by two height. Then I'm just going to say uh, t.update and t.show. And now I have a single one. This is just the same exact code, but I have now refactored it so this tentacle lives um, somewhere else. It lives in, um, it, all the code lives inside an object. Now, what did I want to show you? Here's the thing. I really don't like that I renamed this tentacle. It's causing me to be confused because it's an array of segments. I think I should just call it segments. Um, so one thing I can do is I can go here and I can do rename. Look at that, rename. Now, obviously, I could just click on this and type a new name, but what the rename tool in processing does is it finds all the other places you use that variable. It's not a find and replace of the word. It actually is able to look to where the variable is being used. So in a comment, it wouldn't change. So let's <laughs> hope this works. <laughs> rename, I've never actually used this. <laughs> Segments. I don't have my da-da sound effect. Okay, that's really exciting. That worked, that is brilliant. I love that, that makes me so happy. Okay, so um, now I've renamed it. I feel like this is a bit easier to follow. Okay, so great, goodbye. No, <laughs> there's more. Um, what I wanna do now is, I don't know what I wanna do exactly, but let's try, I don't know what's gonna be interesting. I kinda wanna put them in a pattern. What if I put them all around the edges of a, a circle? That's kinda crazy. So what if I made an array list of tentacle objects 
Uh, do I really have to call this tentacles? I think I do. <laughs> and tentacles is a new array list of tentacle. And I'm not going to add anything right now or do anything. I'm going to comment this out. So what I want to do is I want to say for, I'm going to use, I'm going to, I'm going to make a little circle. A equals zero. A is less than uh, two pi. A plus equals uh, two pi. Let's, let's, let's see. Let's see how, what's our change in angle is two pi divided. Let's have 10 of them divided by 10. This is like a weird idea that I'm doing. I have no idea if this is going to be any good. You're going to have a much more creative idea of how, why you want to do this. Um, and then I'm going to say, give me an X. Give me an X. An X is the center of the screen plus cosine of that angle times 100. So I'm just going to place all these points around a circle. And a Y is the center of the screen plus sine of the angle, uh, a height divided by 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say tentacles.push a new tentacle at x comma y. So I just use, again, that same polar to Cartesian thing to get all the points around a circle. I'm using that Perlin noise and polar to Cartesian. I need little, that's all I ever do, I guess, basically. And it's not push, because that's JavaScript. With an array list, it's add. And then now I can go down here and I can say for every tentacle t in tentacles. And I can get my update and show, whoops, update and show back. And I can run this. And you can say, whoa, look at this. So I got all these tentacles starting, and they're all following the mouse. Now, this is kind of interesting. I think there's probably a lot of possible ways you could expand on this. Um, one idea I have, first of all, is to not have them follow the mouse. I could have them follow a Perlin noise moving thing. I could oscillate their endpoints. Really what I probably would want to do is give them each their own thing to follow that's kind of around the edges, depending on what side they are. I think I might want to stop here now. I kind of, this is, uh, uh, um, but I, I do think it's worth kind of noting, actually, what we could do is, um, and, and actually, I think this might be more interesting if the tentacles themselves were not so long. Um, so I'm going to make them actually only have 10 segments, right? And that's, they're still quite, they're still quite good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what this, uh, this looks like something. And I, I kind of want also them to uh, maybe be further apart. All right, so you can see this. I don't know what I've done here. I almost want, now I also want to draw, I don't know what I'm making. I want to draw an ellipse. I just want to be able to see the, the sort of circle which is 400 by 400. So, oh, and I guess I better say no fill. There's probably, and there's probably a clever way I could constrain them. So you can see what I'm doing here. You could imagine this is the beginnings of the design of some creature. Now, since they're all pointing towards the mouse, you're getting a very uh, kind of specific thing. It looks kind of like a spider web, kind of like noodles. Um, but one thing, since we said robot arm, let's get them to try to pick up something. And I want to make it appear a bit more, um, obvious what I'm doing. So I'm going to make the length of these 50 and I'm going to give them just four segments. Um, so now you can see they're much more robot arm like. And actually, I just, I don't know what I'm doing exactly, but I just want to have five of them. Let's try that. Okay. And maybe I'll let them even be a little bit longer. Like what if I give them, <laughs> I'm losing my mind here <laughs> because there's really no point to what I'm doing. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to just say, let's make, let's make a particle. And I should really make this an object, but I'm just going to give it a position. And position equals new p vector. Uh, p vector. Um, I'm going to just start it in the. I'm going to start it at zero zero, and I'm also going to make a velocity. And I'm going to say velocity is a new p vector which points, but you know, two comma one point three, just to give it something arbitrary. And I'm going to say now. Position.add velocity, and I'm going to um, uh, position.add velocity, and I'm going to draw a little circle at position.x. This is going to be the apple. Position.x, position.y, 16. Imagine this, I guess I could make it kind of green, a green apple. Would it be like, I don't know, what, is that a color of an apple? Um, so I'm going to do this. You can see there's my apple, and I'm going to say no stroke. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And there's the apple. 
You can see it moving along. So what I want to do now is have these arms follow the apple. And I, I feel like the apple should, oh, I want to give it gravity and have it bounce around. Oh, there's so much stuff that I want to do that I'm not going to do. But I will, I will um, have it move a little bit faster. So now what I need to do is just say, okay, if uh, position.x is greater than width or position.x is less than zero, we're just going to make it bounce. Velocity.x, multiply it by negative one. And then we'll do the same thing with y because, uh, because why not? Um, and then we will, we're going to add gravity to this because we have to. Um, so now we can see there's the apple. <laughs> it's moving very slowly. Let's uh, increase its velocity by three times. So you can see, so let's see, it should move, it should bounce. Oh, oh, what did I have? I have a mistake. Ah, greater than height. Uh, it didn't bounce off the bottom. So let's see that apple. It's going to head towards the bottom. It's going to bounce around. So why am I doing this? Is because now I could have my tentacles follow that particle. So you can see they're all trying to kind of grab it. And I don't know whether they're throwing it or passing it or whatever, but you can kind of see what's going on. I feel like it's sort of, the positioning of it is kind of weird. I think it actually, this would be more interesting if they were positioned all along the edges. And also if the ball did something a little bit more interesting, like if it um, actually had some a force like uh, gravity. And if I said uh, gravity uh, is a new p vector that points you know, down by some amount. And then the velocity always changes by the gravity. And then also I should probably, eh, this is going to cause a problem. I should also say if pos.y is greater than height, this is a little thing that I'm going to just scooch it back onto the screen because it kind of gets stuck. Um, I don't see the gravity happening here. Why not? Or is it just so weak? Yeah, it's, I think it's there. It's also, we don't need the, um, we don't need to actually check it. Up. If there's gravity, I don't need to check the top anymore. So this is why, this is what I meant to do. I can just scooch it back on when it hits the bottom. So uh, come back. So you can see it's bouncing. And I could add some dampening. Let's add some dampening. I'm really off in like physics land here for no Good reason. You, everyone's probably stopped watching this video by now. No one's going to see my end screen. Oh, that's so much dampening. Um, <laughs> so I can add a little dampening so it kind of like slows down. And you know what would make sense is only have the dampening happen when it hits the bottom. So maybe that would make more sense. Okay, so you get the idea. But <laughs> oh yeah, and, um, probably apples in the chat. There's actually a person named probably apples in the chat says, I might be wrong. I, yeah, I don't just spitballing here. Who knows? I mean, I just might be wrong, but I don't think this is probably Apple's voice. It's my voice, but probably apples don't bounce around like that. And I think that's a very good point. So uh, I, I almost feel like this will be more interesting to watch if there were only two of them and if they were further apart. So hold on, just bear with me for a second. What I'm going to do is where do I make the tentacles? I'm going to have just two of them and I'm going to make this 300. This is silly because there's no point in a circle. Yeah. So look at this. Now it looks like they're playing uh, catch. <laughs> uh, which they aren't, but it's kind of interesting. Um, so there you go. Here is my inverse kinematics robot arms playing catch with an apple on the coding train. I really want to say a special thank you again to Keith Peters and Coding Math. Um, these examples are, are really essentially exactly the same as the examples that are right here. And you know what, I'm realizing I better show this one because I think I'm getting this idea. I, I know I'm getting this idea from exactly this. So this is Keith Peters' example that is in the processing. I didn't, I, uh, my code is quite different because mine is an object or in an object oriented fashion, but this is there and you can see there's some variations um, in terms of segments uh, and how they're working. So. Um, um, uh, there's great suggestions in the chat. I could do things about constraining the angles. I could make them not intersectable. There's lots of things I could expand this. I could think about design. Um, there's so many possible things that I could do to expand this. But so thank you. Check out the Coding Math channel. If you want to see somebody who knows what they're doing about math and coding, that's a channel you should watch. Great examples, great inspiration. And you can see here um, we have our robot arms playing catch. Thanks very much. And I'll see you in a future episode of the coding train. <laughs>